New Year's Day, 2011. I'm in my mid-twenties, unemployed, broke, and utterly desperate as I walk into the Corvette Diner looking for a job. As an out-of-work theater major, I would have taken anything they offered, but I had heard about one job in particular that sparked my interest, disc jockey. <laughs> a staple of San Diego, the Corvette Diner is like a Johnny Rockets on steroids, a massive eating establishment that trades in good old-fashioned whitewashed Americana from the 1950s and 60s. The only out-of-time feature is a giant poster of Guy Fieri giving the diner a seal of approval, thumbs up. Waitresses with big attitudes and soda jerks with big regrets are required to take the monikers like Trudy, Maud, or Buster, all hearkening back to a simpler time. It is a place that makes you feel like anything is possible with a milkshake. Upon arriving at the Corvette that fateful New Year's Day, I strolled up to Ed, the head disc jockey and lifer at the Corvette, to make my DJing intentions known. Ed, with his sweet smile, Tommy Bahama shirt, and khaki cargo shorts, asked if I had ever DJed. I hadn't. But I didn't say this. Instead, I responded, spin all the time, dude. Great, Ed replied, and I assume you are familiar with the 50s and 60s top 10 billboard hits. Before I questioned if I should tell the truth, another lie popped out. Am I ever? That stuff is my jam. <laughs> this is not 100% accurate. I know the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, and Elvis, but looking in the Corvette Diner's playbook of songs was like reading the menu in Klingon. So I just picked songs at random, like any tune that sounded vaguely familiar or like it might be danceable based on the title or artist. Ed threw them on the Corvette's airwaves, iTunes, while I sweated to those oldies. By the time song number five played, Ed closed his eyes and breathed deeply. Oh my goodness, he sighed. This is the best playlist that anyone has ever put together when applying for this job. And thus, DJ Etch a Sketch was born. <laughs> Why Etch a Sketch? Because the Corvette requires that your fake name be in context with the time. After a manager tried to force DJ Duke onto me, a friend suggested that DJs have two turntables, much like the nostalgic Etch-A-Sketch has two knobs. If it worked for the kids, it worked for me, and boy, did it work. As DJ Etch-A-Sketch, I would go on to be the most highly revered weekend DJ at the Corvette Diner. This is because I played really deep cuts from very obscure artists. B-sides and C-sides that turned heads, yet prompted solid salutes of thumbs extended upwards. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing, but whatever it was, it seemed to be hitting all the right notes. And the Corvette employees knew that when I was DJing, they didn't have to hear Hound Dog five times in one hour, every hour on the hour. Becoming DJ at a sketch was a dream come true based on a fantasy I didn't know I had. I felt like a superhero snorting cocaine, flying higher and higher, especially after discovering my silky radio voice. Hey, groovy dudes, hep cats, and boogie down babes, grab yourself a ch ch ch, -ch, -ch cherry cola and head on over to where everybody is working at the car wash. Without a doubt, it is one of the best jobs I've ever had. Sadly, the universe shows you that you can't be DJ Etch-A-Sketch forever. After a year at the Corvette, I left San Diego for the Bay Area after finding a big boy career that offered health insurance and a title my parents weren't ashamed of. With a heavy heart, I put away my turntables, iTunes, and, forced, and focused on being a stupid, mature adult with responsibilities. But something was missing. I had retreated into my superhero's alter ego life. My world was thrown off balance, and I was beginning to feel 
an intense craving for that sensation I'd experienced at the Corvette. The problem was that I didn't know how to feed this craving. I tried to drown my sorrows and desires by going to certain bars on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursday nights. <laughs> bars that only advertise one thing, karaoke. <laughs> my routine consisted of ordering a drink or two or three, stirring up some liquid courage, submitting my nom de plume of MC Pasty to the KJ, and waiting my turn until I was ready to rip loose on the mic with some old school Jay-Z. Like when the Remy's in the system, ain't no tell em, will I fuck em, will I diss em, that's what they be yelling. I'm a pimp out blood, now relay Sean. Y'all be chase them, I'll replace them. What? <laughs> because when you're a nice young Jewish boy from the hardcore streets of Salt Lake City, Utah, you've got to find a way to express yourself. But once again, the universe reared its ugly head and showed me what happens when you rock and roll all night and only go to work every other day. <laughs> MC Pasty had to be written out of the series for a while, but that craving continued to gnaw. Around this time, I'd moved into a house in San Francisco. Rosa, one of my new roommates, worked for a startup. This startup was moving their offices into an old historic building in downtown San Francisco. And with this move came a party. And with this party came her search for a DJ. Even though I owned no equipment and it had been a few years since the Corvette, I offered my services. Rosa was very kind. Jake, we're going to rent you a system. What do you need? I remembered the dirty little secret at the Corvette Diner was that the DJs used iTunes. Being a real DJ with an actual sound system was out of my league. But not wanting to sound like a novice, I said, you get me the biggest, baddest, most expensive system you can afford. My wish was granted. When I walked into the venue the day of the event, I was greeted by a sound system three stories tall. Subwoofers begat baby subwoofers with illegitimate grandbaby subwoofers. <laughs> there were two technicians who were going to be monitoring my levels all night long, both of whom bombarded me with questions about XLRs and RCAs and other Klingon jargon. I, I kept asking about where I plug my headphones into the thingy that connects to the laptop input device, and guests had already started to arrive. Things needed to get started. Pronto. I got this, you guys. I got this. Kept coming out of my mouth, even though I didn't have it or even know exactly what it was. <laughs> With one nervous finger, I hit the space bar on my laptop, and just like my audition at the Corvette, the power of Guy Fieri blessed me because when I pressed that button, beautiful music came out of the speakers. Guests moseyed their way onto the dance floor. The party got popping off. DJ Itch a Sketch! had been resurrected! As the cutoff time for the party rolled around, Rosa approached me with light in her eyes. Can you keep playing until like three in the morning? I, I smiled. Hand me that Costco-sized bottle of whiskey and we have a deal. I took a long slug off the bottle, then without waiting for any other beats to drop, I promptly blacked out. The next thing I remember was waking up in a living room surrounded by family portraits of people I did not know or recognize. I had no idea where I was except the house was not my own. My wallet was empty, cell phone dead, and I was missing a shoe. Exiting the house, I approached the first person I saw, no doubt fearful of interacting with me in my current state of complete chaos. Where am I? I asked. Oakland, the bewildered passerby informed me. Fuck. I don't live in Oakland. One thing I did have was my clipper card, which allowed me to enter BART for a ride of shame back to San Francisco. Upon arriving at my house, Rosa stormed up to me repeatedly saying, I can't believe that you, how, how could you do, why did you have to completely ruin the night? 
I plugged in my phone to see about 20 messages and 30 missed calls. Various people, friends, neighbors, all had tried to contact me during my bender. Piecing the clues together, I came to understand that someone at the party drove me to my house after the cops arrived to shut the joint down. I was already passed out, but they'd woken me up in an effort to find my keys, which I would discover in my pocket while I was listening to the messages. Cut back to me belligerently ranting and raving at the top of my lungs on my front porch from about 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. before the stranger gave up and hauled me to their house in Oakland. The last voicemail was from a woman I didn't know and had no memory of meeting. Hey, Jake, or uh, DJ at your sketch. <laughs> my name is Nina, and I got your contact info from your roommate. I was at the party last night where you were playing, and I just loved your music choices. But what I especially loved was how you came down onto the dance floor, busted some moves, and rapped along with one of the songs. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Flashback. It all rushed into my head. DJ Etch-a-Sketch undergoing a Jekyll and Hyde transformation into MC Pasty, who snatched the microphone, walked into the dance floor, and spit a classic gangster flow like drunk off Chris, mommy on E, can't keep a little model hands off me, both in the club, high singing off key, and I wish I never met her at all. It gets better, ordered another round. It's about to go down. I couldn't have, but I did. I knew it in my heart to be true. The voicemail continued. I'm an event coordinator and I'm looking for a DJ to play our corporate retreat at the Ritz Carlton next month. Holy shit. I had booked another gig at the Ritz fucking Carlton. But I was embarrassed and more than mildly ashamed. Rosa was understandably pissed. She had vouched for me to her supervisor and I had treated her work event like my own personal music video. At this point in my short DJing career, I earnestly tried to listen to the message the universe was sending my way. I decided that if I was being paid to DJ, the least I could do was stay sober through the event. Hell, if all went well on this next one, maybe I could go into business for myself and DJ part-time. For the Ritz-Carlton gig, I purchased some of my own equipment. I arrived on time and was a well-behaved boy. As the night went on, Nina found me and asked how I was doing, to which I replied that I was peachy keen. Great, great, she said. So, when are you going to get drunk and rap on the mic like you did at that last party? <laughs> My face flushed red. Oh, no, I, I don't do that anymore, I told her. That's, that's not me. That, that was an anomaly. But she trailed off. That's the whole reason we hired you. <laughs> so if you could make that happen sooner rather than later, we'd all appreciate it. I took my cue. Whether this was life or destiny or the universe, it was time to suit up in my cape and mask and take a double shot of kryptonite, no chaser. <laughs> and to my surprise, it worked. And it has been working for the last four years. DJ Etch-A-Sketch is currently available for weddings, corporate events, bar and bot mitzvahs, quinceaneras, and anywhere you need someone to turn up the volume with, give it to me. Give me that funk, that sweet, that nasty, that gushy stuff, but don't bullshit me. No, give me that funk, that sweet, that nasty, that gushy stuff. Thank you. Holy shit. My brother, Socereo co-founder, Jake fucking Arcade.